As you may know, I am doing a series about .NET MAUI and storage. And this is the second part. And today we will talk about storing settings. Welcome to my second video about .NET MAUI and storage. The first one was about secure storage. If you missed that one, you can go and watch that after this video. Because this video don't require that you have seen the first one. And there will be more videos about it. So please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. And of course there will be other .NET MAUI videos as well. I plan to put out at least one every week. But today we will talk about setting storage. And I will show you how easy that is in .NET MAUI. So here we have a simple app that I have started to build. It's a very, very simple settings page with one setting, a switch that we can switch on and off notification. So what we will do in this video is to write the code to save that. So it will be remembered by the app. So you don't have to set this every time you start the app. You want the app to remember it, of course. So what I've done Code-wise, is I have created this view, a view model with a command for the save button, a property for the settings so I can bind the switch to it, and then I have a load data method that is loaded when the binding context is set on the view. So there we will read the data from the settings service, and then I have the save settings method that is called by the command, and there is where we persist the data. And for that, we're using a setting service. So setting service in this case is a wrapper around what .NET MAUI offers for storing settings. And the reason for that is that I want the code to be testable. So it's easy for us to write unit tests. So this I setting service is just two method in it, get and save. So let's go to the actual implementation. But as you can see here, the methods here are empty. And that is because we should write it right now. So, .NET MAUI and the MAUI Essentials, formerly known as Severin Essentials, offers this preference class. So you can use preferences.default.get and this is a generic method. So we can use the same type as in this method. Then it want the key and default value. And why we have a default value is because if we don't have saved anything yet, what value should be returned then? In this case, it will be false because we don't have enabled notifications yet. But in this case, we just pass it through. And as you can see here, there are also an option for shared name. We will not use this in this demo, but you have it there if you, for example, want to share those settings between other app extensions, for example, on an watch app. Otherwise, you can only use them inside of your app. So we don't use it here. So get and result you can call a variable. Then, because this is a method which returns task, and we don't have any await in here. We will instead use task from result and then we just return the result like that. That is better for performance than having an async method and return it even if we don't have any awaits here. So the save is also very, very simple. So we use preferences dot default dot set. And then we pass the key, the value, and the share name if we want to. And then we do return task dot completed task. Why I decided to do those methods to return a task? Yeah, that is because if we maybe in the future want to have another implementation, we have an options to make them async. So I recommend you to do that. So Anyway, even if in this case we don't use anything async. 
we go to the load data method and we can set uh, the send notification property to be await setting service dot get bool and then we need a key so we can do like this name of send notifications and then we need a default value false then we go to save settings and do await set setting service dot save name of send notifications and then we pass the value so now we can try to run this and see if it works so here we have the settings page the switch is not toggled but if we now toggle it and press save settings has been saved okay so let's restart the app and see if it works and here the app is again and as you can see right now the notification switch is toggled from the beginning so that means that the code we wrote worked thank you for watching this video the second video about dotnet maui and storage there will be more video about dotnet maui and storage so please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you for watching.